everyone welcome back to my channel today i figured i would do an air garden for beginners video everything i wish i had known before i started um, and kind of like my top 10 tips to making the most out of growing um, indoors with hydroponics so if you're new to air gardens or you just want to learn how to kind of make the most out of these little units then uh, just keep watching while since I made a video um, I kind of took a break for like the last six months I was traveling a bit and the thing with air gardens is the units do everything for you they're like essentially foolproof but you do need to check on them from week to week and because I was here and then away and like constantly in and out um, it just got a little too overwhelming to keep up with them I did get a lot of like DMs and emails asking me if I still have them if I still like them if I would recommend buying them and I do um, I have this small six unit countertop model which is called the harvest and i have it in this pretty copper color it's a couple years old i think i've had it for three or four years now and i've used it like three times this will be my fourth time i think and then i have a larger um, floor model it's called the farm and i have the smaller size so it's a 12 pod capacity um, there's all different models i'll cover that and i'll show you like what to grow in each which model to buy i'll cover it all today so the machines have already been deep cleaned. Um, I have a whole video on how to do that. I'll, I'll be linked up here or I'll also put it in the description box. Um, it's really important to sanitize your machines in between growing things. Um, kind of there's, there can be a buildup of like algae and like dead roots, um, the like staining from the plant food, all that. So you definitely want to give it a nice deep clean. It's really easy to do. Um, and yeah, I, I cover all that below. So they're all sanitized and ready to go. And today we're just gonna plant and I'll talk you through tips and things as I plant. So for this round, I'm gonna do a mix of herbs and lettuces and then some cherry tomatoes and hot peppers. They're all things I've grown before, um, but now I have like more experience. So I know what to do and what not to do. Um, and yeah, oh, let's talk about models and like what you can grow and which model to buy. So. To my knowledge, there are four types of air garden units. There's the Sprout, which is a tiny three-pod model. To be honest, I don't really recommend that one. It's just too small. Um, there's the Harvest, which is a six-pod model. It's the one I have here. Um, this is an older version in the copper color. Um, and then there's the nine-pod Bounty. It's also a countertop model, but it's got nine slots on the grow deck, and it's slightly bigger than this. And then there's the Farm, which is a floor model um, that holds anywhere from 12 to 24 units. So not only is there like a size difference between the models, but there's also a like height capacity difference. So the grow deck obviously will be bigger the more pods there are. And then also the height changes. So this one, as you can see, grow, it goes up to 12 feet, um, and not 12 feet, 12 inches or one foot. This is the harvest at the max capacity. It's just above my kitchen cabinet height. Um, the Bounty goes up to 18 inches, and then the farm models go between 12 and 24 inches. So one foot, one and a half feet, two feet to three feet, something like that. And that has an impact on what you can grow. So I think you should decide like what you want to grow first. Um, if you're brand new, I recommend doing herbs. Buying herbs at the grocery store can get quite expensive. Um, it, you know, they go bad quickly, and it's, it's just really nice having fresh herbs. I feel like they make a big difference when you're cooking. Um, so for me, I love basil, I make a lot of pesto, uh, I love rosemary, I like steak, um, and chives, I kind of feel like chives are one of those things that I don't really like buying at the grocery store because they can get kind of expensive, but like they always, they're nice um, when you grow them. So, and parsley too, parsley is good for guac and um, pasta, and yeah, those are probably like my top herbs that I'm going to grow. Um, and then if, so if you want to grow herbs, the harvest is great for that. If you want to grow fruiting plants like tomatoes, peppers, um, hot peppers, anything larger, you're going to need the farm model, the floor models. Um, the countertop ones, like you can force it, but it's just not going to be the best experience and you're not going to get the best results. So number one question is determine what you want to grow and be kind of realistic with, you know, your, like how new you are to this. Um, and number two, pick the model that will fit what you want to grow. I recommend starting with the Harvest. I think it's the best 
like price points, the size, it's a great introduction. And then if you like it, then get upgrade to the farm later. And all of these are reusable. Um, they last a really long time. Like I said, I had it for I've had it for about three and a half, maybe four years now. And they're still going strong, so um, they they do last a really long time. Oh, and on the topic of herbs, um, I do recommend getting something like this. It's a little herb saver. Um, whether you're buying herbs from the grocery store or you're using the little air gardens, I find that these things help keep your herbs for a really long time. Case in point, this rosemary, it's still like bright green. I think I bought this before I went to Italy, so probably like late, probably early September and it's the end of October right now. So they lasted like two months in here, which I think is incredible. Like if I buy it in the grocery store and I just put it in, you know, a plastic bag or like a damp paper towel, it'll last maybe like a week to two weeks max. And this is like two months, like it's genius. Um, and it's really affordable. You can also kind of hodgepodge it and do it yourself with like a like a glass jar, like a mason jar and a, and a plastic bag around it. So um, I just think those things are really handy and I'll link it in the description. It's like the best little kitchen find that I've had in a while. The other suggestion I have for what to grow is lettuces. I feel like everyone should be eating more greens. It's good for you. And um, the fun thing about it is you can grow lettuces that you have probably never heard of before or like seen at the grocery store. So I picked a couple last year uh, that I'll replant. It's tatsoi, tennis ball lettuce, and um, like a like a red, like a yellow and red spotted cabbage. Um, I also did baby bok choy, which was really like cute. Uh -huh. So you can get fun varieties, um, and you can definitely use the machines to grow your own seeds if you already have seeds. Um, or you can buy seeds. I will show you. So you can get seeds from anywhere. Um, I like Baker's Creek. I found them a couple years ago. They're very, very popular. They have like a catalog. This is this year's catalog, 2022. They'll probably have 2023 coming out soon. And they just have like the most, I don't know, the most unique things in there. Like, I don't know, I'll try and flip through it for you. Um, you everything from like on watermelons to like a bunch of Chinese and like Asian herbs like those giant giant um, string beans and like the giant cucumbers they have like British stuff they have all different kinds of things and they also have a lot of um, dwarf sized options that are good for container planting or like air garden planting so that's Tip number three, make sure if you're buying your own seeds that you're getting things that can fit within the capacity of an air garden. They're small, right? Like, it, it, if you're gonna transplant it outside, then you can buy whatever you want, but if you are growing indoors only, then it needs to be dwarf sized. Um, a lot of times when you're searching for seeds, it'll say something on the back like container friendly or dwarf version. So like, for example, I don't know if this, this might be backwards, but it says like container friendly on there. So that's something to look out for. I did make the mistake of planting these yellow cherry tomatoes. They're called Hartman's Gooseberry. Planted these, I think, maybe a year, no, two years ago, a year ago. And they are not meant for um, the capacity of an air garden. So I had to move them outside and then they did really well outside, but um, I did want something indoors entirely. So I would recommend something like Orange Hat. These are really easy to grow. They're super, super compact and they grow a lot of fruit. Um, and I'll link all these in the description box as well if you want to check them out. Um, you can also buy from like your local, um, you know, Lowe's hard, hardware store and garden store. Um, and Etsy has a lot too. So a lot of options. And if you do want to use your own seeds, I have a whole video on how to do it, which again, I will link up there. Okay, tip number four is to keep in mind spacing. So if you're going to grow something like herbs or lettuces, you can do, you can uh, basically calculate like one pod per plant. So this little harvest has six slots. I can fit six herbs in here or six different types of lettuce. And by the end of it, by like month two, it'll be very full, very crowded, but it can support six plants in there. If you're going to grow cherry tomatoes or peppers or anything that is like a fruiting plant, it's going to need more space. So. The general rule of thumb is hot peppers need about three spaces and tomatoes, cherry tomatoes need about four spaces. So not that I would recommend putting it in here, but if you're going to put a cherry tomato in here, you could probably only fit like one, you could maybe stretch, to, stretch it to two. Um, I would recommend a giant floor model for the, I keep pointing that way because my 
floor models over there. You, you need more space for bigger plants and you definitely don't want to overcrowd them um, because they just aren't going to do as well. Number five is you always want to put these little clear caps on them when they're just starting to germinate and don't throw these out. They include it with you in the air garden when it's your first time, save them. They're reusable um, and they're plastic so you don't need to create excess waste. If you are growing larger plants, so like a hot pepper needs three spaces, you want to close the empty spaces. You can um, buy stoppers from Air Garden if you want like a super sleek, you know, really pretty look. Um, you can also use um, tennis balls, golf balls, anything just to cover the space. Um, I personally recommend, I personally have found that Nespresso pods are the perfect fit. I have these little espresso capsules and upside down they fit perfectly in the little air garden slot so it's another spacer idea if you already have an espresso lying around. Um, just yeah, the, the main reason is you want to make sure that no extra light gets into the grow tank, the, the little base, um, because light and will encourage algae to form. Be aware of your temperature, like the internal home temperature. Um, try not to put it right next to a window. The extra sunlight will have the plants try to grow in that direction. Um, try not to put it next to like a heater or like an AC. Like you want it to be kind of an even nice temperature. Um, anything too hot, too cold will, or too windy will make the plants suffer. Keep in mind like the kind of water you have. Um, in New York City, the water is pretty good, like the tap, so I just use that. I don't really bother to, um, I filter it, but I don't bother to like distill it. Um, but I have also grown in New Jersey and maybe it's just where like I live in Jersey, but the water is much harder and I noticed the plants were suffering. So in that case, you might want to use distilled water. It just depends on your local water source. Make sure to check the roots. So in the beginning, um, it takes you know, anywhere from one to three weeks for your little plants to germinate. And then after that, once they start growing, maybe about a month and a half in, you wanna start checking the plants on a weekly basis, maybe bi-weekly, um, meaning twice a month. Um, or bi bi-monthly, whatever the term is. Basically, as the roots grow, they start to get, re they start to grow really fast because you're giving them um, continuous light, continuous food, and continuous water, and so they grow very, very quickly, much faster than they would if you planted them in soil. And sometimes the roots can get so large that they can clump up the the water pump, and they can end up breaking the machine that way. Um, so just like lift the little, so just lift it and check the roots. And sometimes I even go in with scissors and I trim the roots um, if they're getting too unmanageable. And then that way your plants will just be a little healthier, be a little bit more contained um, and good to go for longer. Tip number nine, I think we're on number nine. I'm doing this a little off the cuff, so sorry if it's not the most organized. Um, tip number nine is to encourage low bushy growth. So when you're growing outdoors, like plants will kind of grow up. Sometimes they might be leggy because they're reaching for the sun and you know, sun's like way up there. Um, but since you're growing outdoors, you don't really care if they get too big. When you're growing indoors, you are limited by, like I said, the height capacity of the air garden model that you're using. So you want it to stay as low as possible and grow outwards. And then you get like a nice full bushy compact plant um, because once it reaches the max height of the lights, you're kind of, it, you're kind of done. Like, like it'll start to get out of control and you know, the, the top part of the plant will suffer because it's not getting light. So the key is to check on them as they're gr growing and um, cut them so that they grow outwards. So I'll show you this with basil, like once it has the first set of true leaves and it grows the second set, um, then you start cutting and then you encourage the plant to grow outwards. I hope that makes sense. And then finally, tip number 10 is to try to grow like things together. So um, in something small like the harvest, I recommend doing herbs or lettuces, like I said, and you can mix those together, that's totally fine. Um, but if you have a bigger model like the uh, bounty or the floor or the farm, um, the larger ones, try not to mix uh, fruiting plants with non-fruiting plants. So I wouldn't recommend growing tomatoes with 
lettuces. You could do tomatoes and peppers together, um, but tomatoes and lettuces need very different nutrients on the pH scale. So sometimes in order, like basically one category will thrive at the expense of the other. So your tomato plants need a lot more nutrients um, than the lettuces and your lettuces will kind of suffer. So try to um, grow the, the same things together. You can get around it, like tomatoes, since they take such a long time, by the time they're fruiting, your lettuces will probably be done. Um, you uh, can also just transplant your lettuces outside. Um, so you can get around it, but just something to keep in mind is that every type of plant needs a different type of nutrient level. Um, and it's easiest if you don't mix them. Um, and I think that's it. Those are my top 10 beginner tips. There are more things I can share for like intermediate. There are more like advanced things I can share, but maybe I'll save that for another video. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know what else you want to see as well. I'm planning to be a little bit more diligent about it and film the entire process for the cherry tomatoes and peppers. I, I had the intention to do it last year and just, you know, life got in the way. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. I really recommend the Air Gardens. I think they make a really nice holiday gift as well. Um, anyone can use them, especially if you live in an apartment or a condo or like a small space. They're very, very um, user-friendly and they're very handy and it's always nice to cook with like things you've grown. I, I find like that's just so satisfying. So anyway, um, yeah, I will see you in my next video. Oh, I also am planning to do a video on how to maintain your plants while you're traveling. I have like a whole reservoir system. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. <laughs> okay, bye.